the Nike Air Max, the shoe that launched Nike as a global brand in 1987, the iPod, an object which launched Apple and Steve Jobs to fame, and the Mini Convertible, 2009, a statement in car and mini history. What do all of these products have in common? They are revolutionary, classic, and even have world-renowned designers that are impossible to reach. But wait, what's this? Road signs? A classic design better than the rest. I guess you're right. Before the invention of the car in 1886, Britons had to survive with milestones and finger post signs to get around, and it wasn't until the 1930s when the driving test was introduced, due to a large number of casualties, that more signs started to appear. These signs are now known as pre-war boys. Unfortunately, these road signs do not have a great reputation, and confuse drivers more than actually help them. This was mainly due to the road organisation groups, the AA, the Ministry of Transport and the RAC, following different designs and ideas on how best to signage Britain's roads. White, yellow, blue, pictures that had different meanings, these signs can only be described as chaotic and unpopular, however they have seen a resurgence in recent years kept alive by collectors and enthusiasts. My name is Andrew Bragg, I work for London Underground TfL and I currently own about 70 signs. I was into classic cars since I was a teenager. Classic signs seem to be an offshoot to classic cars, a bit of nostalgia. At the current time they can go from something like £80 up to three, £400 depending on the rarity. You get road signs from things called auto jumbles which are like jumble sales but are car shows. My favourite road sign is, is my oldest road sign which is probably late Victorian Edwardian. Um, I bought off of someone who said they dug it up in their garden. Uh, I like the novelty of them and them being different to what the modern signs are. Commissioned in 1957 to redesign motorway signs and then again in 1961 for all other signs, Richard Kinner, called Jock for short, yeah, we don't get it either, and Margaret Calvert are legends in the design world. In terms of lettering, Kinner and Calvert wanted to develop a coherent system which was easy to read at high speed. A new typeface was formed called the Transport Alphabet, which is now affectionately known as the Handwriting of Britain. Their concept was that many signs would form a map of the junction ahead and include a combination of upper and lower case letters. This was due to word recognition, as it is easier to recognise a word with a mixture of casing due to the brain filling in the rest of the word. Lettering also became wider, white, and made using a new material which allowed them to be visible at night, by reflecting the light from car headlights. Colour was also carefully thought out. In part it was an aesthetic choice, but also it was suggested because of the use of reflective materials and their costs. Black was considered for the background, but was felt to be too negative. The blue chosen was the American Standard Interstate Blue colour, a smart choice which contrasts the white lettering and makes the background appear black at night. I'm Jason Smith, um, I'm the creative director and founder of Fontsmith. To last this long and to be this part of our culture, the corporate identity for the country in effect, I, that just says everything. It has in its own right become a design classic, not just because it, we see it everywhere, but because it actually functions. As a designer, uh, one of the first things you learn is um, you know, form follows function. It epitomises that, in my view. It was a very genuine experiment and a very genuine effort that was put into designing these typefaces. So I think that's what makes it a British classic. As I mentioned earlier, Kinner and Calvert also designed all of our other signs. My favourites are the warning signs Calvert drew herself, as they are in fact based on her own life. Like the cow featured in the triangular sign warning drivers to watch out for farm animals was based on Patience, a cow on her relative's Warwickshire farm. She even modelled an old photograph of herself as a child with a younger boy to become the school crossing sign. Unfortunately, Calvert is largely remembered for designing another sign, something about roadworks and an umbrella, but let's move on because she's amazing. Anyway, there's a new trend spreading which I'm not sure if I like, the transformation of road signs into art, as if they aren't already. Graffiti artists such as Klett Abrahams and Banksy using stickers and spray paint to add stick figures or whimsical alterations for humour. More appropriately, the London Design Museum commissioned 42 of the UK's leading graphic designers and artists to pay tribute to road signs as part of the 50-year anniversary. It is sad but true to say that most of us take our surroundings for granted. Direction signs and street names, for instance, are as vital as a drop of oil in an engine, without which the moving parts would seize up. It is a need which has bred a subdivision of graphic design with more influence on the appearance of our surroundings than any other.